So, Romeo Jozak, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, can you just give us a little bit of a brief background of your, your coaching journey up to this point? Uh, well, I did play quite a bit and then, then injury at the age of 22, uh, stopping from continuing playing. That's why I got into coaching relatively early at the age of 27. I started already as a young coach in the academy and then I took over later on in the senior level, was assistant coach of uh, Dinamo Zagreb first team, Osijek also first division club there, Libyan uh, national team back in the years. And then, then I was offered a position of a academy director at Dinamo Zagreb where I spent the most of my, my years, so seven years I was the head, head of the academy. After that, technical director of the federation. Meanwhile, was in UEFA FIFA as a instructor, a committee member of various committees, um, and after that, the uh, sports director of Dinamo Zagreb as well. And then I kind of felt more into the uh, applying what I was the in theory doing and, and 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 trying to establish and develop. I wanted to go back on the field because I felt I've achieved pretty much everything in a, in, a, in a theory level. And then I went back. I got an opportunity in Legia Warsaw as a head coach of the previous year now. Now I'm the head coach of Kuwait national team for it's going to be 12 months now in a couple of days. Wow. So then let's, let's just start with Dynamo then, because obviously that's uh, such an amazing academy. Give us a little bit of a, give us a little bit of an idea, you know, it's one of the most successful academies in, in world soccer. Why is that, do you think? Why is it such, why is it such a successful academy? Um, well, now obviously the, uh, there's people talk about recipes uh, here and there and they say, listen, you got to do it this way in order to succeed or that way. And there's, and there's right and wrong in, in everything. Uh, I think we have been uh, doing successfully what we have been doing. Uh, primarily reason because I was selecting the coaches to begin with. They're going to be selecting the players and doing the job. The players are not enough um, only by itself, no matter how talented they are. Yes, we do have a talent in Croatia a lot. But um, if, I can, if I can even brag about it or be criticizing myself about it as well, I had to say thank you to 29 people from the academy when I, when I took over the academy. Uh, and then I employed and I hired 33 new people at that time. So it took me three years for that. Uh, and then all the momentum slowly picked up and the players obviously alongside with that, we were selecting, picking, choosing every single player from on the turf of Croatia, even in Bosnia, which is our neighboring country. So um, alongside with that, with the, with the discipline of the, of, the, of the development, with the curriculum that we've had, uh, we had a, let's say some kind of a know-how that people know about it now. Now this is the Croatian football development curriculum now in a, in a book already. Um, all, all along with that and also obviously the, 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 the ability of the, of, the, of the boss of the first uh, Dinamo Zagreb club to sell and to actually um, uh, use the quality of the young players in the, in the modern war, in the uh, football world in Europe was also, also the key. But I would say the fan fanaticism and, uh, and the, 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 the dedication of the coaches and the discipline in work of both coaches and players together with a, let's say, clean and lined up curriculum, the work was one of the, one of the key reasons why. So, you, so, you, so, you, so you, you, you changed the whole staff, basically. You got a whole new staff in, pretty much. I would say, yes, 90% of people so have changed. I mean, so what, what were you looking for? Why, why did you need a new staff? What, what were you looking for from the coaches that maybe wasn't there? Already. Um, one of the, the the license the license itself it's not enough. Uh, even though all the coaches did have to have license, because you know when they ask you nowadays, listen, even in Croatia they ask me every once in a while before when I was a TD of the federation, listen, how come how come you're not all the pro license coaches? For example, you have a pro license coach from the last course. How come they're not all all of them as successful? Like Slaven Bilic, for example, is or something, and they all have the same licenses. And then I go back asking the same question back. You know, all the doctors have the same diploma, when they finish the same school, same education, but when you have a problem with your knee in a city, you know these two exact same doctors you know, everybody goes to. And there's like maybe 100 of them with the same diploma in the city. So there's something more than the diploma, something more than the license, something more in the qualification. And I was looking for that. Uh, that was the passion, that was the intelligence, that was the drive. There was also the, 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 the job, when, they were, when I was hiring them in the academy, this had to be their top job that they had so far. So it wasn't, it wasn't a step down in their career, it was a step up yeah. for them to be even emotional and more ambitious because if somebody is going down in the academy as a step down from somewhere, waiting for another chance, they're not focused 100%. They want, I want them to scrape, I want them to grab as many opportunities as they had. And they were, uh, they were really passionate about it. And that's why I think all the coaches felt that this is the opportunity for them to present themselves. And if you now, maybe you don't, don't, don't follow as much, but a lot of the coaches that were in academy that day, now three of them are in the, in the Croatian first division or when, 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 when also abroad. 
And uh, those young, co- just well, young players, but a lot of young coaches from the academy at that time actually made a made a made a made a sort of career uh, themselves as well. And that's as I say, I would say one of the, one of the reasons why. So it's quite interesting with thinking about uh, coaches from other and yourself and then your current role. What, I mean, what, what do you look for in a in a new coach in terms of you know those personal qualities, those those qualities on the grass specifically? You know, you talked about that enthusiasm, that dedication, but I mean, what specifically? Anything you, you look for? Well, listen, you want to, uh, you want to, uh, you as a coach, obviously, you want to make it now when you come to the, to the top senior level of the football, um, you want to make a result because that's all that counts, right? Even though on, on a short run, that cannot be, doesn't always pay back, but on a long run, it always pays back. You know, football always evens is out, like on, on a long run. Yes, you can be unlucky in one game or you can be lucky in one game. But if you're not the one, it's not going to be lucky all the time. Or if you are the one, you can't be unlucky all the time the same way. So uh, I'm, this, is, this, is the, this is one of the, one of the things that actually keeps me going because in football, there's a lot of unpredictabilities. Uh, a lot of things can change momentum of the game, can, can, can change the, the progress, those things that go out of your control. But the reaction to those changes is within your control. So if you, yes, I'm... I'm aware of the things that I can't control of, a referee's decision, a red card, pitch being slippery, rain, cold, all of these things that you can't quite control, but our reaction and adaptation to those changes make us better or make us worse or make us less better than the opposing team. So that's, that's one of the things that I want to, other than obviously pure theory of football and the drills and all the things that go, I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention about uh, building the momentum in a team, building the, the good psychology, building the team as opposed to only the players. And it takes time for that. Obviously, the national team is a little bit harder because you don't have the players with you all the time. Uh, but for me as a young coach, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's ambition uh, to be the head coach of a, of a country. Um, Kuwait is a very solid country in, in, the Asian, in the Asian circumstances. I have been doing something a long time in the past, really good results, played in the you know, World Cup, played in the Olympics. Okay, that was a long time ago. Now, because of the suspension they had uh, three years ago, things a bit stopped, but now we're picking it up and back again. And as I say, as a young coach, I'm 46 right now, you can call it young or just yeah. can't counting in the age. I want to use, I want to I I try to apply everything I was, I, was, I was talking about, writing about, teaching uh, on the field, trying to make something when, when I leave that country or leave that club, people are going to say, listen, this guy made a change. So let's, get, let's go back a bit then, back to Dynamo then, and, and tell us a bit about the culture you installed. So tell us a little bit about the methodology you introduced at the academy. Let's you know, to break that down for us. What does that look like? Um, we can talk about that like really, really long time, but let's, let's try to put it in, in, in as simple words as we can. Uh, we Croatians have talent. Everybody knows about it. Now. What they call us Brazilians of Europe and uh, here and there. But um, um, every player that has a bit of a talent, none of them, and I haven't seen any of them, that they have a, have a big, broad, complete talent. They have these comfort zones, and we call, we know what, what they are, but they are missing the option B, more or less. Somebody has option A, option B, but missing the option C then. So none of them are fully complete player, either in the, in the, in, in the speed, either in the decision making, either in the technique, either in the tactics. They always have their strengths and they have their weaknesses, right? So what our job is to make those strengths even better and to try to fill out those gaps when the opposing team or the opposing coach detects those weaknesses, then they're going to hit on those and try to, try to use it against them. That's one of the things in the academy development. Aha, yes, I have my strength. My strength is the left foot and I'm fast. I have, no, no, no. Okay, we're going to be working on this. But me as the opposing coach of the other team, okay, uh-huh, this player has that, 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 what he doesn't have. And I'm going to be going against his weaknesses when I play, when I play against him, even as a team, as an individual as well. So, uh, so trying to develop, because you have a good bunch of time in the academy, you have a good 12 years, 11 years of a time to, to detect the strengths, detect the weaknesses. Obviously, how much can you change in these? Because some things are genetically inborn, some, some things genetically more than, than, than the others. For example, as we all know, Everything was got to do with the neurological system are, are quite, quite genetically determined. The speed, the, the, uh, the, the sense for the play, aggressiveness, tolerance to the pressure, all these things are quite, quite born in, quite, quite already determined, right? You can improve them, but not, not too much, as you can do in, in some other aspects of the strength, of the capacities, of these other things that you can technique. So it's quite interesting that, because there's a big debate about nature and nurture, and you know we've had this conversation before about the game the teacher and that sort of thing. So, do you really see that role as a as a coach or an academy of 
you know, being able to stretch the player and, and, you know, really make have an effect on those players. Because I have this conversation a lot with other people as well. They say, oh, you know, well, this player's gone here. He didn't come for a system. But I say, well, look at his weaknesses. Though. Look at that player. Imagine if he did actually have some more support, he could have actually been a better player. Do you think that you could possibly improve all players? You know, that is there something, is there, is there something you to can, go with everybody? No, you can, um, you know, we had this, we had this talk about the, about the, about the, about the seals and the cloud in, in, in a circus maybe yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, right? yeah. I can remember that, yeah, right? Remember that so, like, they say, yeah, if you can teach a seal in a circus to juggle the ball, let's teach everybody anything, right? But how about they have all these seals only in the circus? They don't have any giraffes or elephants yeah. or dogs juggling the ball, only seals. That means even the seals have some kind of a talent. Uh, uh, and not other animals for these particular skills. So yes, you can teach them, you can improve, but there's barriers. There's obvious restrictions in the talent that you can't go farther. Somebody's slow, yes, you can improve them. I mean, that's suppose that's <coughs> like physical uh, genetics. So for instance, you have a player from eight. Now I used to say it when we worked, the clubs I worked with, Chelsea or Spurs, you'll say, we have a player from eight and they come all the way through till 12, the first phase. There's no reason why they should not be able to use their weak foot, for instance. You know I mean? That's for me would be you know, a core thing which you could do, you know, which is something of which course. you could easily. So of course, of course. Do you think that's, you know, are there other things like that you, you consider as? Of, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the thing, restrictions that you yeah. can't, uh, those things that I said, listen, somebody is aggressive. I'm, I'm talking about like a mental things right now, but we're going to come back to technique in a second. I'm talking about the things that you, that you can't, can't even, okay, somebody's not ag as aggressive as you want him to be. So, yes, you can improve him to be more aggressive, but unfortunately you can't make him a tiger out of the sheep. Uh, figuratively speaking, right? Uh, or you can, if you have a tiger, yes, you just want to direct the tiger and control him in the direction you want it to be because you don't want it, you know, you don't want it, uh, you don't want it to disper this energy as he has. You want it to focus on using this energy. So all these things are obviously taughtable in, in, in teachable in, 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 the in the academy. However, those simple things that you said, like weak foot and those little things that, are, that doesn't have to do as much with all these, all these things, but you have the repetition and the repetition works that we had a debate a couple, 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 couple of days ago on Twitter about the decision making, about all these things, how to form a motor program, how to establish, I mean, the, the motor programs work the same exact way, kicking the ball, uh, swinging the racket, or writing the letter A. And, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a connection between the muscle and the brain. And they work stable in every given circumstances. And then after this, for example, then after this, you don't have a problem if you form a stable program. And a stable program is if you make something enough number of the times, tap, 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 yeah. tap, and then based on that you place that in a memory and then obviously your, your talent takes it out of memory and uses the decision. For example, me, I was doing the letter A millions of times, letter A, letter A, letter A. Today, it's a strength. I can use it out of my memory and I flip this letter A in the, any word, any sentence I have without a problem. And it was a very specifically designed stereotype of writing in a proper age and I was forming the simple program. That's not a restriction for me right now. I'm using it out of my memory because it's a stable motoric program and I'm applying it in creative circumstances, which is a sentence composing. Okay. Now, soccer is a specific, specific football, football specific uh, activity. The same way we can say the tennis is specific activity compared to football. Writing is specific motor activity compared to football and tennis. Yeah. Handball is specific activity compared to football. But the motor principles of learning are the same. And you can't be just going, yes, they're out of the million on this planet. Yes, there are kids. They are more talented in this, in this special area. And you can detect and you can have a video of somebody making a, 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 a rallies and everything. But show me the video of Agassi at the age of three if he was being chased around the pitch and making the decision at the age of three. No, he was in a position. He was standing maybe millions of times his forehand to make it a, for, a formation of the motor program. So, so we've had this conversation before. So I mean, because that would be in, in stark contrast to, to a lot of people now who are talking about the constraints-led approach where everything should be, during, should be done in a game context where it's more chaotic because they say maybe that then that actually has more longevity or more, more likelihood to be transferred to the game. So you're, you're saying that no, it's, that, it's, that it's, basic com it's completely wrong. Most and I'll tell you why it's completely wrong. The wrong is not because I, I say it's wrong. It's because when you're, when you're forming a motor program, you don't only have to be having a stable environment to actually have the stable repetition as number one. You've got to be isolating the muscle, muscles that are trying to even disturb the stability of the performance. So imagine in the unstable circum... It's, it's, it's a basic motor program psychology for the well, not psychology 
biological rules and everybody can go into the books of the, how, how, how things are being done and say, listen, how can you develop a stable motor program in the unstable circumstances? It doesn't happen, right? It's got to be stable. First of all, when you play small-sided game, I'm not talking about the selection criteria for the talented players. Uh-huh, we want to get the national team together. What are we going to be looking at? We're not going to be looking at the simple dribbling. We're going to be looking at the guys, putting them in, a, in a, yeah. confront them, and then we're going to be choosing them who's got this. But I'm talking about the, those ones that don't have it, and a lot of them don't have it. And this is the, a lot of them is a starting point as a zero-one point to start off with. And then based on this, you go tap, 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 tap. Once you've gotten hold of the stable formation of the programs, then you can apply those memorized programs in the decision making based on the talent you have. Now, going into the small sided games at the age of seven, eight, nine, first of all, players up until the age of 11, they don't have the biological capability to see things other than the, other than the vision they have in front of themselves. So when you see a tennis player making decisions here, they see all that. But the players up until the age 11, they don't have any ability to make a decisions out of the peripheral vision view that they have. So I see you, I can't even predict what's going to happen in town. So when all those third player games, you pass the ball to me and I'm going to be laying it over there, I can't do that. You can do it, but it's not going to stay inside me because the window is not even there. It's at the age of 11, roughly, more or less, right? So making a small sided game, whereas in the basic stable repetition, you can improve and form stable motoric problems, if you go in the unstable circumstances, you're having it this much unstable where you not only ensure stability of the program, you're using all these other muscles that are disturbing the stability of the program, which is catastrophic. So what happens is, yes, you're, you're encouraging and you're allowing the players to only make decisions based on the comfort zones they have within their technique. Uh -huh, he's got his left foot because he's talented. He's going to be making decisions with his left foot. With, Figuratively speaking, with his right foot, he won't be making. Why? Because it's his weakness and he doesn't have an even form program. So what you do in, in the long run, you develop those and then when the time comes, you use them in the decision making. Well, Doug Limoff um, calls it encoding failure. That's the thing. So you have all players just playing a game. It might look like there's activity, but actually maybe they're not. They're just, you know, it's a chaos. The, it's a, it's a, in the bad learning, habits and, bad habits. Exactly. Yeah. You're encouraging development of their comfort zones. Which ones will be detected and conf confronted against by somebody stronger and detected and, 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 and eliminated. Yeah. Whereas, whereas, as I say, I'm not talking about those guys that you can find on YouTube and there's one out of a million always, like those Messi's and all those Mozart's and all these guys, they just had it. Yeah. But what about the, the pure, the pure, none of the, I, I like to say on, 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 on the lectures I had, I mean, show me the writer, show me the writer that didn't, there's a, there's a talented kid that can write at the age of four, because he's talented. Listen, mama, I know, and he writes and he comp But that's one out of the, out of the 10,000 a million. But in the first grade, in the seventh year of age, we start with the simple motorical learning. Why? Because the window for the education is the most appropriate for this age at this, this okay, stage. So a couple of things then. The first point then, why do you think there's such a, a contrast with a lot of the, 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 the uh, research or the, the, the voices coming out from a certain part of the... Uh, the sports science community. To be, to, be, to be honest with you, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even uh, imagine how, it's a no-brainer. It's like simplicity of the thing because there's the excuse, uh -huh, soccer is a specific activity. Tennis is a specific activity compared to soccer as well. Everything is specific activity compared to the, the other activity, right? So in football, if we miss and there's like clearly defined windows for development for, of every skill, even the, even, the, even the mental ones, never mind the simple technical ones. Which element here, which element there? Repetition, 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 repetition. If it just goes back in the definition of the motor learning, it's a motor learning, doesn't matter, without the, with the ball, with the violin, or with the pencil. It's a principle of the motor learning. So I'm surprised why even the bigger institutions go so, for me, it's an excuse. It's an excuse of not having the strategy put in place. Well, that was always, my, for me, working with, especially the younger age groups at, at the academy level, but also you know, as a primary school teacher, working with young players. It's common sense for me as well. I see how children learn the benefit of having a little bit of focused time out of there. So why it's just a strange to say that even so many federations are almost embracing this thing. But that's, that's also um, maybe my point as well. Like you just, I thought you made an interesting point. They don't have the strategy. Maybe they don't have the idea. They don't have the the experience or the intent to know how to really teach technical 
I, I mean, nice. listen, it's, it's a, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what's a coaching job? It's a hard work. Yeah. It's a hard work, it's a repetition, it's, it's a dedication, it's a passion, I think. And I'm not gonna say, and I'm not gonna say it's easier this way or it's harder this way, but it's just proven like this and it's been proven, you're gonna see. I'm not gonna, but you know what's gonna happen? One, one, one day down the road, the effects are gonna take place, but it's gonna be too late. And the, and the prices are gonna be very. So I'm, I'm also surprised why huge nations, not big nations in the club, I also, excuse me, I also understand in federations, yes, you don't have this much of a development because you're choosing the players for the national team at the age of 13, 14, 15 and on, right? More or less, not many go below 12 for the national team, right? Yeah. Maybe some kind of a selections, but not the national team itself. So yes, you don't have them within your control before the age of 13, 14. So you can detect them and I agree again, at the age of 14, choosing the player, the national team, yes, I want to see what kind of decision, what kind of sm 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 smell, what kind of sense for the play, what kind of aggressiveness, all these things he's got. But if we're talking about the groundwork, how to develop those things, and not talking about the top of the pyramid, talking about the ground of the pyramid, these are principles, of, so I'm, I'm surprised. So let's then talk about then, putting that into practice for a coach. So what does that look like for an under nine session, for instance? What, is, what does a typical under nine session look like for developing a good quality technical player? I mean, listen, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get you one sentence, and it's gonna be very interesting, about, you know, like we used to play on the streets, and I used to play on the streets myself. I was, I was on the streets playing from the age of five to the age of 18 on the streets five, six hours a day, every day. But do you know how many times anyone ever corrected me out of these 13 years times six hours a day? Hey, Romeo, no, 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 use this one. No, 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 Romeo, how about this one here? No, 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 Romeo, how about... Zero. So yes, I was playing, but I was always encouraging and I was always developing my already given comfort zone, yeah. which in the area of Brazil on the streets and survival could be enough for them to make it because of the numbers, because of the talent, because of the way, but it's not a system. That's a, that's a thing where you develop because they're naturally, they're naturally this talented, they're naturally this agile, they're naturally this aggressive, wanting to even fight for their own lives in career, but this is not a system. Now, we don't have the ability to, to, keep, to give the kids even if we had, we would have to be careful because we don't correct them over there. Maybe every once in a while I was smacked by the older guy over there because, listen, why didn't you give me the ball? But I was never directed and corrected. I was never educated in a proper way. Whereas now we have the academies or we have the system, whatever you want to call it, and you have two hours a day or more or less. But you have this specific amount of minutes on the train. You can't afford to waste the minutes for the something that you're going to be not developing properly. So you want to use those 15 or 20 or 30 minutes of the training session that you have because you have to give the kids ability to play it out, to scrimmage, to feel the game, to compete because they have naturally desire to compete. They want to win as the kids, if they want to win. Yeah. But you want the kids, they want to win. That's why you select them in the first yeah. place also, right? So you, yes, you want to ensure this, this amount, we can now into go into specifics of a training session, but you want to ensure the stability of the, that it's appropriate for the age, for the development phase they are in, ensuring the technical element. I'm not saying it's got to be simple. Could be well passed. Just give us an in, like a brief, good luck and idea then. You know, what, what a basic session look for us for an under nine. I mean, under nines are really simple. Obvious, you got to see the, the level they're at. In the, in the Medina, we are selecting already quite talented players. So yeah. maybe you're going to have to go in the basic stuff. But you want to make sure the programs that they have are going to be sufficient for once down the road decision making when you come to the comforting play, opposing play against each other. So as I say, technical technique, uh, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were, don't get me wrong, we were like going so hard on technique from the age of 8 to 12, that was unbelievable. Individual technique, getting the individual technique where it's complete no opposition, then you're going to have the dynamic technique using this simple technique in a dynamic circumstances and then you're having the fun functional technique. A technique is functional where you're using this dynamic technique in the circumstances of a third body around you. So, aha, uh -huh, I'm controlling the ball here, controlling the ball here, controlling the ball here. Now, I'm not going to control it here because you're here. I'm going to control it there. But I already formed a program that gives me enough of the strength of the program that I can use it from my memory and apply it in a situation when you confront me. And then slowly you're getting more and more players Having in mind that up until the age of 11, kids cannot 
detect even the, the big picture on the pitch because they see tennis player or, or ping pong. It's even easier because they see what they see. And they can go here, this, that, 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 that. Around, it's very hard. So it's a, it's a serious topic and we are going back and forth chit-chatting. It's all good. But, but to, to leave and to give the responsibility for somebody to tell the kids at the age of seven, you guys go 4v4 and you're going to be making decisions and you're going to be choosing the options and you're going to be correcting your comfort zones. The game itself will do that. For me, that's a, that's a crime. For me, that's a crime. So do you think there's such a thing as perfect technique? So a, a, a specific way to do every technique? Or, I mean, or do you think there's variations? Or I mean, is there something you, you get all players to aspire to? I mean, uh, I'll tell you the recent example I have here in Kuwait. You know, I, I come from a country where you can say we have technical players, right? But technique in, 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 in golf, in Arab golf, it's, it's, it's kind of a different, you know, it kind, of, it kind of goes in those little touches, um, touches where they're not, they're not this much, we could talk about, again, the specificness of the technique, you know, it's not uh, the, 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 that, that done that much in the academy. But on the other hand, it's got restrictions when you come to the big play. So yes, they're different and they seem very technical, until it gets to the city. Why? Because they have their comfort zones. So technique itself, yes, uh, there's a difference between that. I, I would like to call it functional. If you can solve the problem on the pitch, yes, I call it a good technique. If you can't solve it, no. But to, that, to get to that stage, forming the program about that, it takes some time. For example, uh, every sport has filtered the opti optimum by mechanics for that sport. For example, skiers, they all go like, you're not gonna see a skier go like this. You're never gonna see a handball player, rarely to be short. You're never gonna see a, 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 a sprinter running like this, other than Michael Johnson. And he also had specificness about this and he took it on to that side because he was specific about this, but also being functional enough to compete on a big level. So the, also the football filtered the optimal technique and the optimal for me technique is uh -huh, you control the ball with the inside part of the foot you control why because the inside part of the foot is more accurate than the than the toes somebody like luka modric or arian robin or some of the guys using it with the outside part of the foot with their better foot in the circumstances but my question is uh -huh, show me other not two show me other million of them that do that or show me other uh, hundred of them do that. This is example that are confirming, you know what I mean? Those, those this mistake confirms the principle. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's in a way a mistake. Why? Because they're this good that, that uh, Agassi that we spoke, he played all his life like this and he will not. No, when you teach the kids, you teach them like this. When you teach yeah. technique, you go like this. But no, no, Luka Modric controls it. Why? Because he had something more. But you cannot teach the kids in the first grade of the, of the, of the, of the elementary school, you, know, you guys write letter A however you want. Just write it however, you're gonna be later making decisions. No, no, it was from the line to line. It was for strict to strict. And then you form it, you form it now, today. I don't think about letter A, I just write a letter. But it's my program. In the first grade I was doing specific, simply, and it was, and this is the key word. They were isolating, I didn't know about that. But they were isolating all the muscles that could interfere with the stability of the motion. So now I don't have a problem with this. Yeah. Or if people think that's wrong, I mean your signature, we have our signature with make the same signature with the left hand if it's this easy. No, no, how come we all have the signatures? I don't think about it. I don't think about it. Make it with your left hand if you think that, that it's easy. But it takes time to make a motorical program and they all work on the same principle. And that's why I'm amazed to see people throwing the money into development and uh, for, for something for me it's, it's, it's wrong, completely wrong. So just, I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to visit Zagreb Dynamo uh, a couple of times over the last few years, really impressed and I mean, you talk a lot about that technique and that was my main, you know, my first impressions, my the major takeaway was the, the, the importance of the technical base. I mean, and so, I mean, tell us a bit about the curriculum that you've developed there and there's something like, something like 105 different technical assets or something like that of, of different technical elements in the younger age groups. Sort of like. uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, we outlined it really, really nicely and neatly. And as I say, I wouldn't want to call it a recipe. What we did later on when I was, when I was taking over the Federation's um, job as a technical director, um, then we put it all in a one series document. Now this particular book is the, it's Croatian Football Federation yeah. official curriculum. Uh, something what's for me one valuable document. So, so just tell, how many, how many, tell us about those technical assets. How many are there did you, did you, what was it exactly something like 105 or something? 
which elements? Oh, yeah, 100, 106. 106. 106. So give but, us a, just a couple of examples. What, what sort of things would you be in there? And then... But you know, variation, there was like variations of the simple element because you wanted to form all these other programs of, yeah. let's say, one basic, uh -huh, there's an element of, for example, juggling the ball like this, 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 all the variations. So when you add it all up, you want to use, you want stability in every of these elements which are going to be later applicable. Talking about the kids that you, everybody starts with the same ground point, right? And then you later develop it. We used all these little th th things in, 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 in a book that, 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 that I took, and I'm very proud about it now. The, the whole Croatia is still, still into that. And, uh, but but uh, it doesn't have to be, don't get me wrong, it doesn't have to be this one. I just wanna, I would just like to see some kind of a, some kind of a discipline, some kind of, a, some kind of an order in the development. No, uh -huh, this kid is, no, they don't need that. Because at one stage, if the kid at the age of 11 plays on a big field, making decisions, this is like just as well as, 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 as big ones play on the 200 by, by 300 yards pitch because this is this big for the kids as it is for the, for, for, for the big ones later on. So that when you're, when you're teaching somebody something at the age of 11, you've got to be aware what they're going to be confronting it with or and against later on in, in, in their careers. So it's interesting because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm an individual coach, that's why I, I did my main my career, I work with a lot of pros, but I mean, do you think there's, my, my main reflection working in seeing academy football, lots of different academies, that maybe there wasn't that much individual coaching going on within academies where everything was in the game and there wasn't much individual players being pulled out and isolating things and yeah. working in that environment. Do you think that's right? And, 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 and do you think that's a really important part of development? I think it's a huge part of development. I think the isol isolated part, and we said why, because you want to you wanna isolate the muscles that are interfering with the stability of the motion, no matter, no matter what the motion is, in football the same way. Obviously, the earlier the better. When you come to the age of 15, then I'm sorry, it's too late. So everything should be taken care of by the age of 14, 15 already. As Arsene Wenger said, whatever you taught kids uh, in technique by the age of 15, you taught them 99%. You can't go further than that. So I think maybe in the countries, like big countries like the States, where they're starting or they're even trying to be more aware of the talent of the kids uh, at the age of 12, 13, 14, then when it's getting close to the end of the phase for the, de for the technique development, then you're implementing as many because you got, you got to chase, you got to speed up. But if you're starting at the age of 7, 8, 9, 10, then you've got plenty of time to actually correct all those decisions. And, and isolation, I'm not talking, even though we've seen all these videos about the teams, big teams playing those, those isolated uh, patterns of, of passing, because that really helps and it really still develops. It doesn't develop as much as in the face of the nine-year-old kid because you, you pass the window. But repetition is a petition. I mean, you just take the guy from the street and make him pass the ball every single day at the age of 45, Five times, blah, 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 in 10 years, the guy's going to develop. It won't be enough, but he's going to develop because he developed his program, right? So in the academy, yes, it's very important. It's, it's appropriate and it's necessary. And then you're using it in the functionality of the problem solving in the games when you're opposing the teams with the small sided games or elsewhere. And I mean, one of my other major takeaways from both visits, visits but particular last visit where we did the uh, Inside the Academy documentary was uh, the, the implementation of the world, the, key, the, the 1v1. Go working the importance of one v one all the way across the uh, academy. So we watched under eight sessions all the way to the reserve team, and there was an element of one v one in each of the sessions. How important is that, and why is that so important? But it, it is because it develops um, it develops the functionality of the technique, right? Whereas uh, with the young kids, it, 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 it's still in the area of the play, right? But later on, it's a uh, you know the the mistakes that you do at the age of nine, they're not this pricey as they are at the age of nineteen. Never mind the age of twenty nine. So uh, you got to be you got to be developing the responsibility of the of the technique in in for example simple simple circumstances you know like you when you're detecting the profile of the players you want you need a defensive midfielder and you have the offensive midfielder the way I'm talking about the average I'm not talking about the specific I'm talking about average the average the the way the way the the players the defensive midfielder protect the ball is much more safer naturally than the way the offensive midfielders protect the ball. Because why? Because throughout the ages, throughout the position, throughout the development, they developed the functionality or they didn't. But if they survived, they did. How to protect the ball, not to lose it. Because if you lose the ball on this position, it's much more expensive than to lose the ball on a position on number 10 or, or elsewhere high up. So confrontation of players, 1v1, it goes from the ground technical development to the area where the, the 1v1 situations develop responsibility and functional problem solving in a tactics matter because 
individual technique here be, 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 becomes individual tactics here. How tactics? Why? Because I get the ball and I control it because you're here, I'm going to control it here. At the age of nine, no, I'm going to be developing my thing based on the next step of the functionality of the individual technique that you should have developed prior to that in a stable, isolated circumstances. But, uh, but uh, uh, the importance is great because, uh, uh, you know, the game gets tougher and tougher, it gets quicker and quicker, and a lot of the players find themselves surrounded with five players. So there's decision-making is getting more and more important. But none of them is going to have decision making is done well unless they're going to have the tools to perform decisions with. For example, if you have the kids at the age of seven, eight, nine, and they play and they see the hole between two players, but they don't have the ability to take advantage of this hole. Mm -hmm. Yes, they see it. They, even they didn't see it. First of all, this one they don't see. Yeah. This one, if they see, they would want to use it, but oops, too bad, it's on my weak foot. Mm -hmm. And if you want to use it, you're not even developing the program, even if you clumsy somehow did it, but it's not going to stay, first of all, because another window, second of all, they have the cognitive restrictions because they don't see it in, 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 in this one, and second of all, you're using too many peripheral muscles that you shouldn't have used in order to, to form a stable program based on a repetition. So for me, those things are really plain and simple in the development, but still complicated enough for them to somehow you use it. It's interesting because I, when I, I travel a lot and I'm working with players, teams from abroad, and I, I find that a lot of, I, I put a practice on, which is a 1v1 focused practice, some of the players just don't have that capability to take the responsibility. They're so used to playing in team situations uh, with overloads or rondos and things yeah, like that. Yeah. They obviously don't have the ability to, they're not forced to make that decision themselves, so they're always looking for that, yeah. for that outball. Yeah. And I think that's why those 1v1 gladiator type practices are so important. Uh, because, like you said, it gives the players the ability to develop those yeah. skills. Because some people say, oh, no, I do all my 1v1 and a 2v2 or a 4v4 or a 5v5, which is yeah. good. Yeah. But yeah. there's nothing quite like that individual battle. Yeah, that yeah. And, 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 and if you fail, if you fail, you're going to learn. If you fail, you're going to learn. So let's say one, once you go, and you're going to fail. But then if you still want to do it, you have talent for that, you're going to be obviously developing the other options of taking somebody one and one v one. So like every aspect of training, this one is just as important. I suppose it's developing that physical ability to do it as well, right? Being able to those movements to go either way. True, true, you, true, you true. Do that. Application of technique in the yeah. functional circumstances. And so tell us a bit about then in terms of recruitment. I mean, what sort of players did you look for at Dynamo Zagreb? Listen, you know the the football nowadays is getting uh, in, in the area of the of the of the and, and normal speed and aggressiveness and agility. Um, obviously, uh, we as a nation are talented. As I say, talented again, we got to be defining what a talent is. But overall, talented, yes. Trying to um, trying to uh, get them in the functional circumstance as much as we can. And I, as I said, I was uh, I was one of the one of the one of the one of the principles that we've had in the academy was uh, the five things we had to have was uh, obviously as good player as we can have with all the criteria as a player definition is right what kind of talent you have you need to be it's speed aggressive uh, vision peripheral vision technique functionality uh, progression uh, teachability tolerance to the pressure all these things that are lined out like a lot of them number two you have to get a good coach because if you have a good player without a good coach also no you gotta have number three you gotta have the good program so that good coach works with a good kid based on the things that we just saw, uh, talked about, like the, the, the details of that. Number four, you gotta have competition with, within the team. So if you have one player that stands out too much out of, the, out of the rest of the group, he also subconsciously doesn't develop as much because every time, let's put it plastically in words, every time he passes the ball away, he won't get it back because the yeah. quality is not good. And the number four, or the number five, you gotta have the quality within the, within the league format, within the competition with the teams he, they compete in. So if, if this your team is too, if they're winning 8-0, 9-0, 10-0, it's not going to be. So there has to be some kind of an opposition. In the league, they're, 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 and the league competitions, the principles of the responsibility for the playing football for the points starts right around puberty, more or less. So let's say 14, 15, 16, right? And then you've got to be teaching them to have the responsibility how they play football. So the, the, the criteria number five would be nearly as good opposition or quality within the league we're competing in, in order to ensure all these five things. So when you, when you choose for the players, uh, listen, we've, uh, sometimes you see something at the age of 11 and you're sorry or you're, you're, you're regretting that you, they don't have, for example, they have everything, but they're slow. Okay, we had a couple of players that have been, and they're not playing in a, and they're not playing in a Real, as some of them have, 
but there's one player that has nearly as everything as they all had. The same thing as they had, even better in some things than Luka Modric, even better some things than Mateo Kovacic, but he was not this fast, Badel from Lazio. So he couldn't make it to, uh, to, uh, to uh, because he was just a little bit slower. But his decisions, his uh, peripheral vision, his uh, technique, his uh, fight, his leadership skills were good enough for him to be playing one step below, which is Lazio in the big uh, one. You mentioned Modric because uh, one of the um, impressions I had when I looked at the squad, especially the younger players, 9s, 10s, 11s, that they weren't as physically developed to say what you might see a typical English team look like, or especially some of the Northern European academies where physicality, you know, is, is more of a, um, an important part of the... Uh, the recruitment is that something that we're but, but, but listen you know every every coach no matter how no matter how young they go they all everybody wants to win and i'm not saying it has to be the principle i'm saying we're going to be pushing them and pressing them to win but everybody wants to win this is the this is the bottom line right so yes the the bigger player can run them over yes but in croatia we were trying to uh first of all you take in the talent as much as the talent is and yes, Luka Modric was, I don't know if you spoke about that, when, he, when she showed up in academy, he was, a, he was a young, skinny, short player that had all these skills that you, we were just talking about right now. But you know what? For me, that's, I was a coach in academy at that time. To, to be brave and say, listen, he's going to be what he's now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't be able to say. There was like so much more other players that have been physical. And also, that was 20 years ago for myself, less experience, less knowledge than I have now. <coughs> but uh, but uh, choosing choosing the, the the big players, knowing that are early developers, that are late developers, they can go, they're going to catch up with with the other players. Now this should be an easy topic and task for the serious academy, not to fall for the big guys, you know, as opposed to the young guys, or young guys, small guys that we all know going to. Okay, you have his parents, you have his grandparents, you see his bones, you see his zone, zones for the how they how they grow up and and, and everything. If he's got all these things, tip, 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 and you know he's going to develop in the age later on, listen, there's no need to actually panic about that. Okay, so moving along now, just let's, let's talk about your current role at Q8. And uh, like I said, uh, working as a national coach, a great, great honor. Just tell us, what's, what are the main, main contrasts, the uh, differences between working within academy football and which working at a national team level? How many nationally, when you, when you represent... A country, any country that, that is, and there's like 20 countries more or less in, in, in the world. Uh, it's, 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 it's a huge response, a huge honor. Uh, I'm not Kuwaiti, but I feel how, how Kuwaiti feel about Kuwait, which is normal, right? So uh, you got to respect that. you got to be responsible. you gotta be, uh, you got to be knowledgeable and wide enough to, uh, to, to input all these informations around to detect them and manage them on, on, on a proper level. Uh, as we all know, you don't have much time for the development. Yes, now we have a 20-day camp here in London, but, uh, but uh, you're going to be mainly focusing on uh, tactical options and development because technically you can't do much of an impact and significant change anymore. And a bit more and much more about the psychological aspect of it, mentality aspect of it. How to manage, how to direct, how to focus, how to unify their energies because every player comes to you with their own energy, with their own knowledge, with their own emotions. Control of the emotions, control of the energy, detecting the energy and directing the energy so it becomes one unified team. To make it in seven days prior to the game, it's not easy. Uh, it doesn't have to do much with the, with the football itself, only now we're going to make overlaps or passes and we're going to be better or we're not going to be as good if we didn't do it. <coughs> a lot of talks, a lot of, uh, a lot of focusing, a lot of thinking. A lot of decision making on a higher level, uh, a lot of a lot more details in the in the mental area than with the kids. Uh, a lot more tactical options today. We spoke for two hours in the morning about one options over there because every player has their own strengths and weaknesses. How to use those against the opposition? And, uh, yesterday was a draw. We're preparing for the qualifiers, and uh, and and I'm happy so far. So that's, I mean, that's, that's quite interesting because obviously <laughs> you come from an environment where um, technical work was so important, that technical base. That's what I'm interested in. So, you know, how 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 can how, do you try to affect the players? You know, for instance, you have a wide player maybe who's, you know, having difficult crossing the ball or some technical, you know, uh, deficiencies. <laughs> Is there time to pull them out? And say, okay, let's go and work with this individual. No, not as much. Not as much because you are you are aware of the restrictions that you have, or you got to be aware of the time restrictions and the and development restrictions you have. So to actually, uh -huh, you need a player. You need a player for this particular task, and he doesn't have it, and the other one doesn't have it, 
and, the, and you're being realistic enough to say, listen, we can't even improve them to be on a competitive level of that air. So we're going to change the option. We're going to change the tactical approach. We're not going to go from this side. We're going to go from the inside because we don't have play for that. Or you're going to put the guy that has nearly as good as you wanted him to have. But, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm talking about the technique. I'm talking about a technical improvement. They're minor. They're like little, little, little minor, like really, really minor improvements on the tactical area where you're using the quality of the players you're choosing. First of all, you're, you're, you're choosing the players. I'm choosing the players from Kuwait. I'll choose you, I'll choose him. Based on my choice, I want to make a tactical decision how we're going to be the best performing against whoever. And then using the things that I was telling you about, which, 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 which covers the 70% of the area, and that is the mental stability, that is the focus, that is the drive, that is the determination, that is the that is the, the, the stability throughout the whole game. For example, yes, we all stay, yeah, we, it's all this easy. Yeah, you go here, you cover. You go here, cover. But I want to see a team, how it looks between the 60th and 80th minute. If we look stable from these two, why? Because you're tired, the focus loses, the, the game goes out, you play the fans, everything, goal up and down. Eh? So it is a lot of distractions. So try to get those distractions out of your, out of your focus and try to, your reaction to these distractions should be, uh-huh, we're still going to be a stable team, controlling, 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 controlling. I'm not saying necessarily you have to win all the time because you won't be able to win all the time. But you, you got to be satisfied that at the end of the game, you gave your best and you did it all that you could have done. Obviously, I'm also learning. We had a game two days ago that we lost. Uh, okay, we won two previous ones that we lost. And I'm also detecting myself as a young coach. Should have I done something better? I had five changes in the second half. Should maybe Did I maybe cut the momentum with these many changes? Should I have left only three changes to actually get them going, get the pressure going? We're also learning from the process, right? Because it's a living process. But you know what? It's not a, it's not a development part. The, 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 country, the country watches your every, every move. They're waiting. They're, they're expecting. They're hoping to go to the World Cup like everybody does with b bigger or less, less big chances. It's a huge responsibility. And, and listen, like, like, like in the play, players' area, the same thing as the coaches. You've got to be able to tolerate the pressure. You've got to be handle the situation. And, uh, and I feel good at that. And I feel good at that. And I think, uh, I think if, if God's, God's going to give us some health and, uh, and prosperity in the future, I think we're going to do good. And what about, for instance, because it's different to the development world, like you said, how do you deal with, like, for instance, the maverick? You know, the, the player who has that something special but maybe doesn't have the, the discipline within the team and that sort of thing. You know, is, would your, has your attitude changed towards that now? Or so when in the academy, maybe there's something... No more off the cuff where someone is more of an individual than which, which player again? So say for instance a player who is like has a little bit different who who creates something special but maybe is not that disciplined. I have I have I have two of those like that. I have yeah. two of those. Yeah, actually we had a talk this morning. It's uh it's 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 it comes back again to the area where what I what I said the, the, the head coach should have the skills of managing and talking and getting the, the players' emotions because I don't know if you I don't know how 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 knowledgeable and, and how, how realistic and aware people are, but emotions are superior to our quality of performance. So let's say if I'm sad in the morning, if I'm sad in the morning, very sad in the morning, my performance will not be the same as if I was happy in the morning. Probably, probably, right, on many cases. So you want to maintain your emotional level as well. You want to see, aha, uh -huh, on, on the training, if they're coming on a training with their eyes like this, or, or coming to the training with the eyes like this, it's the same body, but the emotions inside are not the same. So with this player, uh -huh, he has this, he has this, he has this. He doesn't have that. Let's talk, let's see, let's, what is the problem? Obviously, applying the drills, what are going to give him better. Also, listen, uh -huh, you don't have it. So I'm going to kind of cut him, or I'm going to yell at him, because he might be actually going, am I losing completely? Because everybody, especially nowadays with the social networks world, uh, egos and, 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 and mistakes that we all do. You want to take him. You want to take him as much as you can to your side. So he's gonna. So he see you fight for him. That he fights for you, right? But uh, from the football perspective, again, you want to use. I'm talking about a national team. I'm not talking about the club. In the club, you have the time to work from Monday to Sunday, and you can do and, and, and correct those mistakes. If he doesn't want to correct them down the road, you cut him. Get another player if you can, and that's it. But you try to develop in the club. In the national team, there's not much time to develop in a technical area as much, as I say, much more in the tactical and the psychological area 
to get the detected player and to apply him into the into the so, second phase. So then at Lego Warsaw, was that different than a different? Uh, it was big time different. So you had a lot. You had more time. It to was big time different. Players individually and yeah, well, it was a, it was a big deal different. It was a it was a it was a it was a process. It was a development development again because they're all 20, 21, 25, 28. Also, technically, they can improve, but not too, 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 too much. Yes, they can, but not too, too, too much. You can speed up the game, speed up decision making, speed up technical reactions, the tactical things. But uh, but you can you can make miracles because you miss the phase, as we as we as we said before. But it's 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 a whole lot, especially physically difference, right? Psychology doesn't this much interfere, even it does, even that else. But in national team, it's all about the momentum, about the energy, about the tactics. And what about, I mean, because you, also you come from uh, Croatia, a big, I mean, a, a mutual friend of ours, Tom Bayer, he talks a lot about the culture being so important within the, you know, a developing nation. I mean, Croatia also has a big footballing culture. What's it like in Kuwait? And has there been any challenges around that in terms of finding players or people embracing the, uh, the national team or, or what you're trying to do? You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's different because the, the climate uh, creates also a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the habits, uh, it's too hot, they can't play outside, they don't, they don't have this within the culture. Uh, also, the, throughout the ages, throughout the years, uh, thousands of years, you know, they are, they've been forced to live much more during the night than in the day, because in the day it was too hot. So uh, all these things, uh, year by year, day by day, they develop something more, something less. Um, culture is a, is a, is an amazing, amazing um, for me very very important uh, um, aspect for the development. And I uh, glad you mentioned Tom. Tom is a, first of all a good friend of mine, and second of all, uh, every day we are getting a proof how important that is to start with the football as early as possible, or as well, or as as Tom says at home, or 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 with parents, with father or mother. Uh, the earlier the better, right? Uh, in this, in these, in these ages, you know, kids fall in love for the ball. They they get friendly with the ball, and this love and this feeling with the ball later on becomes the quality, becomes the techniques, becomes the the asset that they have, the strength. First of all, it's a love, it's a play, it's a toy that they have, but later on it becomes a tool. Later on becomes even a tool for the earning the money. But the earlier they start, the better. And I and I fully agree with the with the. With the with the process and with the with the things that he has regarding the uh, the early start development. So so what what would you say then is the most important part? What's the most important age for development? Do you think do you think there is an important key area, or is it just each stage just as important as each other? Um, I would uh, I would encourage I would encourage for the players for the kids to start as early as possible, even earlier than three, right? But obviously that's not easy. Why it's not easy? Because at the age of three or two, you don't know if the player is going to grow this much. Is he going to be slow? Is he going to be this way? Is going to be so you don't have the you don't have the, the the bigger picture of the talent criteria as much as you have at the age of seven. At the age of seven, you can see it because you can control them. There are kids they can listen to you. You can already direct them because they go to school. Um, th th there's a discipline behind it. So, so you would you would start with a discipline organization. So, what I would say, or or let's say propose, or 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 have an opinion about, is that they start at the age of six and seven, where it becomes organized, and before that, obviously do as much as they can with home because they do play home to come to this level with a certain already talent preparation, and then it's going to be easier because the starting point is going to be even better, right? The only, I'm not going to say it's not a concern, it just, it's just a fact, obviously, um, uh, and I fully, as I say, agree with the, with, with the Tom, football definitely starts at home or as, as early as possible. At that stage, we unfortunately don't know at the age of three, is the player going to be a football player or, or a world player? Because when, when, when he comes to the seven, eight, nine, he might be lacking those other things. But if the football player himself started at the age of three, he's going to be, he's going to be having a lot more than the other ones that don't. So, uh, so, uh, but organized, organized academy level process, uh, I would, I would say, it, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be started later than the age of seven. Do you think it'd be possible for you to replicate the Dynamo model in a different country, 
quite some countries, yes, some countries, no. In Kuwait, no, for example. But in, in, in some countries that are similar, some countries that do have the, uh, the, the similar things, I would say yes. I'm, I'm not going to say now which countries. But I would say in, in all these um, countries that, that do have similarities, and let's say all European ones have, uh, regarding the climate, regarding the talent, regarding the, uh, the everything, I think we can, we can copy it. Uh, I'm not going to say the same effect would take place. But uh, I think it will be. I think it will be well, well, uh, well recognized. And so I always found fascinating as well <coughs> countries like Croatia, and looking at, for instance, northern European countries, you know, uh, Scandinavian countries, Sweden and Norway. Why, why, why are the players just generally so much technically better in in, in that part of the world, and why is the the culture so different? Where you know, if you look at the Swedish team, you know, or the Norwegian team, and you look at the Croatian team, there's a big difference in individual tech. You know, those, yeah. you know, is that. Is that confirmation bias in terms of the players they're looking for, the way they coach, or is there something in the culture, do you think? I think it's a lot about the culture. I think kids, kids still play a bit more outside. And, and as you say, we, we still go back to the same thing. Uh, obviously, it's an asset, it's a quality, it's a strength that they come with the playing outside. That they come, that they come um, with, with, with starting football at home because they have it already pre-developed. But they're mostly developing their comfort zones if they're not being directed. And that is my, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, I'm not going to call it minus, it's, it's, it's a weakness, but it's reality. It's a reality because if you don't have any kind of a restriction, you're developing your comfort zone. You're not going to go out of the comfort zone if you're not being uh, pressed or directed or even punished later on, right? The comfort zone is a red light on the traffic lights or less of the, a comfort zone I would run right through. No, 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 you have to stop because of the red light. Uh, if not, you're going to be punished, right? So the same thing, the kids were going to go, you're going to follow your momentum and your, 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 your motion if you're not going to be directed. So, yes, the more, because we are a social country, people get together, kids still play on the streets, we have a talent in the genes, because, for example, if you're, throughout the millions of years, you're developing one habit, obviously the nation is going to be more talented towards this, because gene on a gene, gene on a gene, you're going to develop more talented nation towards something, like in a China for something else, right? And they start early also with the, with, with the development. But uh, now the same question is, uh, would the Chinese do the same thing in, in India if they started the same application of the table tennis development in India. Questionable. You know, it's, it's, it's a big, big thing. Why? Because uh -huh, those guys already have talent because their grandfathers had it, their grand-grandfathers had it, and they already have something predominantly already determined as, as opposed to Indian guys, like they have in a cricket, as, as, a, as a parallel, right? So, uh, so um, uh, I think, I think uh, in being social, developing those skills, yes, they are comfort zones, but you're taking their quality within the comfort zones, doesn't matter, but they're good comfort zones. You take into the process, you're making the restrictions, you're making the rules, you're making the option B, C, D, E, and you're, you're you pray to God, and you think you hope for the best. And uh, what, what advice would you give to a, a young grassroots coach of a local team? He only has one hour training a week with the team. What sort of stuff should he do with that team, you know, at the 10-year-old or 11-year-old? De yeah, depending on the age, depending on the age. But as I say, uh, um, the, the, we don't know what is what is the, what is the quality, what what is the level of the of the of the of the of the team, what is the level of the players, how yeah, how know, capable so, they are. Yeah, an average local team, average level. I mean, what should they? That but you can you can you can you can miss you can miss uh, no matter how much technique you use. The more technique, the better. Ten, eleven, uh, eight, nine, even eleven, twelve. The more technique. Now, if the technique is, you see, the technique is poor, uh, then obviously you're going to be using it in a more isolated ways until you produce it and you correct it and you direct it and you develop it. If it gets to the higher level, yes, you can use it in, in, in the situation of confronting in the functionality. When I say functionality, I would like to, everybody to be careful here. I don't mean to throw them in decision games because they don't have the options of the, pro of the individual problem solving yet. So I got to be, first of all, taking care of myself, making myself knowledgeable with tools. Then I got to be taking care of one opponent against me. So controlling the balls, if you're here, here. If he's here, I'm going to control it here and get all these little individual tactical decisions taken care of and then put them in a, in, in, in a 3v3s, 2v2. If, if, we see, if we see, I'm not talking about a scrimmage at the age of 7, 8, 9, and 10. Yes, let him play out, let him have fun, let him compete a bit, but not to be this as a basic ground tool for the player development. This is wrong. I suppose that would be, if you have an hour, how much, what percentage of that hour would you let them play a game and how much would you do technical training? I would, let's say, I would 60% 60, 60 always use for the development and 40% of the training, no matter, no matter how, uh, 
how, uh, how long it is. If it's, if it's an hour, then let's say 35 minutes or 40 minutes of that and 20 minutes of the play and so on. And then what advice would you give for a director of coaching at a club who wants to implement a culture like you did, maybe like a local club though, and that, that delicate balance between winning and development, because obviously maybe they don't have the luxury of being an academy, they're in a team where the parents are paying, they'd attend, but how would you, what advice would you give to a coach to try and, you know, create that, that, that development environment in a pay for play environment? It's a, it's a, it's the same, the, the, the same way. Hard on, and easy to answer. The, uh, the, they have responsibility to make something. Right now, the question is, do they live of that? Is there something where they have as a pressure? They have to produce in order to survive. If they don't, then it's obviously these. It's a comfort zone. Again, they don't have to. We don't have to produce, and we're still going to be okay. Like, <coughs> in many cases, many countries, they don't. We had a disadvantage. Well, you can call it disadvantage, but it's a reality. We had to produce to survive, literally as a club. Otherwise, I would have gotten gotten fired, and all the coaches would have eventually getting not. So we had to pressure to do 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 in order to sustain and maintain the 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 the, the, the essence of the club itself. Right now, in the academies, all around, uh huh. Um, uh, it's very hard to put an extra pressure like we had and for the kids not to drop where they're going to be exposed to this pressure because you want to, you're going to be really demanding. You want to ask them, you want to, you want to develop. And when you, when you ask them to develop, they're going to be maybe saying, listen, that's too hard, that's too much because if you want to really do it, you've got to have, you got to have, you got to have tough hands, you've got to have uh, tough feet, you know, it's, 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 going to, it's, going to, it's not going to be easy. So what is the mentality? What is the mentality of the, of the club? What is the mentality of the environment? What is the expectation of the, of the academy? There's all these little questions that are hard to answer, like how, how, would you, how would you do? But general principles, good coaches, ambitious coaches that, are wanna, that they want to do something with themselves in, in their lives, pulling the players alongside with them, detecting the three major area of the coaches, mentality-wise, a coach who is an animator, a coach who actually deals with kids and has fun with the kids, doing the development at the same time, what we just spoke about. The coach at the age of 12 to 16 who is a teacher, a methodologist, who you know, nicely lined up this, 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 this. And coaches from the age of seven, 17 that are competitors, that are fighting, that are fighting for the point. So mentality between the coach and competitor and animator is completely different. So you, you can't be making a mistake to getting the animator at the age of uh, coaching the U19s or competitor coaching the U9s, then you're going to obviously also make problems because he's going to be yelling at the kids at U9, which is not good. And he's going to be too soft with the guys at the U19. So, then it's very, so what you're saying, it's very important to have specialist coaches at yes. your age group. Yes, yes, yes. Also mentality-wise, obviously, knowledge-wise, because uh -huh, those guys that are their teachers, they have to know the periodization, they have to know the, the, uh, the, 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 the quality of the players, they have to know the technical elements, where, when to apply them in which, which, uh, which phase, how many times, which drills with. So I'm saying the overall, those, those are the general principles, the animators, the teachers, and the competitors. But they are, they are there, they're real, and that's, that's also the one thing that we, that we did. And, uh, and then obviously just to try to lift up the academy as much as you can. I mean, that's quite interesting because a lot of the time you'll see the under nines coaches, oh, it's his first job, let him do the under nines, and yeah. then, you know, it's yeah. a stepping stone. Yeah. Do you think that's a mistake and whether we should, that, maybe that's, we should have you know, specialists at that first uh, call, if you like, in the academy? I, th I think, uh, listen, when you talk to the coach, everybody's going to say, yeah, I want to be the head coach of the first team, of, uh, most of them anyway, right? But there, there, there are coaches that don't. There are coaches that don't have it. There are coaches that maybe if the, if the academy director talks to them and feels them out and sees them what is the, their mental and intellectual and psychological quality, because the kids are also, it's not only about the drills. You have to also motivate the kids in some areas. You have to also direct the kids, control the kids, uh, get the kids left and right so they listen to you, but they learn at the same time. In the schools, in the school, we didn't, we didn't know why we do something, but we just did it. Because we were told to, right? But they, somebody else knew what is good for me. I didn't know at the age of eight what was good for me. Why did I do mathematics or whatever? I was just doing it. And everybody was, right? But later on I realized, aha, uh -huh, you see, that was good what I did. And, and the same thing in football. Uh -huh. so it has to be pe coaches that know what is good for the kids between eight, eight, seven, and 11. Co coaches that know what is good. And they don't have the ambition to necessarily look for the first option to go to take over the first team because of the well. So now we come into the, the another, another problem. Are these coaches paid enough to be there? Well, 
My pay right now, you can compare it to the pay that I had when I was a coach in the academy, coaching the U19, when I was there 20 years ago. So that's also a problem. But if the Syria Academy, like in Dinamo, the coaches at the age of U9, they have respectable pay. So they don't have even, oh, so am I going to be here like another five years, 10 years, having a solid, stable environment, mentally being already adjust, adjusted for that and being, being recognized and filtered for that job? Or I'm going to be going and chasing the job around having risky situation, knowing that you don't have even personality to do that because it's got a lot of good personality as well. I suppose, like I said, it's, it's for, for some it's just a natural career move. I need to, I have a family to support, I need to earn more money. Yeah, to yeah, stable, yeah, so yeah. I have a choice to stay at that age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, they, if, if, it's not, if it's not doable, workable, yeah. obviously the guys are going to go look for the opportunity, right? But if a serious academy ensures them stability, here's a five-year contract, here's a solid pay, this is your wage, this is the... And they have that. Listen, they're going to stay. As they stayed, and 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 sixty percent out of the coaches where I brought in, they're still in the Amazon Academy right now. Okay, come, last couple of questions because I know you're a busy guy, Romeo. So, what do you, what other academies around the world do you respect, and why, or if you do? At that time, at that time when I was uh, when I was. Um, uh, Coach of the Dinamo Zagreb Academy, I was uh, I was going around, uh, uh, looking around. Uh, I wouldn't. It's hard to say uh, now. Go which which and why. What, uh, I was uh, I was more going and following the less budgeted academies than the big ones uh, because Bayern Munich Academy, everything you know, there are space shuttles flying all around. And, uh, but is it really you know the essence of it? I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying I'm just principle wise, right? So I would say I liked Porto a lot, uh, Academy at that time, um, producing and uh, doing the players uh, as they are. A um, couple other academies I like with the style, but I also wouldn't want to be, uh, let's say Porto was, was one, of the, one of the better ones I've had. And, and, uh, and uh, what, what advice would you give <coughs> for a young aspiring coach who'd like to get to the heights you have in the game? <laughs> Listen, it's... it's, it's you know, the, you know, you know, you know what our problem is. Uh, the, 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 in a way, the problem with the, with the players. This is what the coaches have. You know, we watch, we watch uh, Star Wars every once in a while, every weekend when Barcelona plays against uh, the, the Real or any, how the, all these, as I say, I like to say, space shots fly around. But but then you come to the realistic war when you get when you get fired first time. And and, and, and me as a coach, uh, when you wanna when when you want to test out your mentality, do you really want it, or you want it because of the money only, the fame, the publicity, the interview that we have right now, or you want it because you have it as, a, as your genetical fire inside of you, when the first time the stadium is going to be yelling your name, uh, go out, go out, go out. And that's when you really realize, are you made for that or not, because it's not pleasant. And uh, then you detect, listen, do I need that in my life? Because it's a huge stress, right? When you're on the line and the whole stadium is going. I'm not saying I, I experienced that. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying I'm ready. I'm waiting for that also sometime. Comes with the terror. Even though I've heard a couple of, a couple of things in, uh, on, on the side, my, my last name on the stands. But you want to feel, you want to you you test yourself out when it gets tough. You know, when the, how the boxers say, listen, when you're down in the ropes over there, laying down on your knees and the guy's on top of you, then you really feel yourself out and see what you're made out of. The same thing as a coach. It's 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 a tough it's a tough job. It's it's a, it's a tough job, but 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 realistically, and one friend of mine, the old mentor of mine, told me, listen, you can, you can compare the, the, to work and football, with nothing else but but with the fact that when you're coach, you're, on, you're on a coach to be on the line. And there's 11 guys you have over there. You're on the line. There's a full stadium. It's a different thing. It's like all these little, all these theoretical uh, to teach, 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 teach. It's all obviously football. But the real coaching job is when you when you find yourself all alone with the players over there. Okay, it's a it's an outcome. The game is an outcome. The game is a final product. To get them to there, to listen to you, to feel you, so you get them. So you can't yell much because, or you talk much because you didn't hear you. But but to have the connection on such a big level when you're on the line, it is such a feeling where people that haven't lived that, they maybe they want it because they see it on the game. But when they see Guardiola and 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 and, and Klopp on the line, they think it's I'm going to be there. But it's, it's something else. It's something different. Uh, and you got to have it. And you got to have it. If you don't have it, you, you're going to be deselected, unfortunately, sooner or later. Because it takes, it takes some tough personality that deep down inside. It takes the knowledge. takes the managing abilities to actually control it all. And takes also the knowledge for the football. So the players respect you, not because your, your last name is this way or you talk in many languages, because they have to feel you. If the players feel you, 
If you don't have it, you lose, uh, you lose connection in the locker room, you're going to be lost. So I'm, I'm, I'm fighting my, my way through, and I'm, and I'm also trying to develop myself, and I, I feel good in this position, and we'll, we'll see how far it's going to go. Right, man. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Amazing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.